<laughs> and even then, <laughs> it's only if you follow the plan. <laughs> No, Grandma and I had a lot of good dance trips, and yeah. our problem is still to this day. We have a problem. We like food. Well, we like food. That's not a problem. That's just an enjoyment. No, if we see dangerous or scary situations, we both start laughing until we're crying. It's really bad. It's a bad thing, and we saw like we came lots of car things. And we would just laugh until we were crying and ready to wet our pants at dangerous things. I think Bruce Sardine. Up, and if I'm, scared, if I'm scared, I, I laugh and I can't run. Oh, I start to laugh and then I can't run to get away from the scary thing. Oh, no. That's a problem. That's a problem. That's bad. This is awful. Awesome. What a good idea. Grandma, who is your most well behaved and your least? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we'll go with the boys first because you, you really compare. want to know that. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I would say I feared ma I feared making my mother mad or making her feel bad. So I tried not to get caught doing a lot of things because I didn't want to make her feel bad. Seeing her throw a glass of milk. Oh, yeah. When Stephen came home from his mission, it was after you came home from your mission. And I don't know what we were arguing about. Probably the dishes or something. something. And I, he just made me so mad, I just threw the milk out of the glass. I think it was something to do with probably something for dinner. If I remember right. I remember yes. that. I saw him look at the expiration and I was like, I want to do that. Like, <laughs> <laughs> he learned not to quit doing that. I remember Dad would grab, I I, did he grab all of your arms? Oh, thank you. He would grab my arm up really tight. I've seen some other people do in this area. Oh, come on. He would. He would grab my arm up really hard and swap my butt. It's going, you did that. Dad? I remember, yes, and that happened at the dinner table too. I think I was saying I didn't like, and it was soup that had peas and ham. Split pea, huh? I remember it. No, I like split pea, but Jerry, it was, it was before that. Came. I think a lot, it was more no, common back I then. Remember we yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I, I got your back. back. Dad, Dad always thought I was a terrible driver after he, they got the brand new truck and the one of the big long trailers, a green one, and they we did get busy, and he's, one day we had something, and I, they had an order that needed to go to Grand Central. So he says, get in that trailer and get that stuff down and get it back up here. And I went down and hit a car in the parking lot. And I thought I was going to die. And Grandpa Withrich, actually, who Dad used to always say was tough, he said, you lay off of him. And I remember because Dad was so mad at me, I thought he was going to kill me. But it was just one of those, you never drove it and just never took, quite took it wide enough and took a car out. So after that, I, it was like, he's not driving. So... <laughs> Oh, yeah, he did. I remember it was right over by number three and 3A over there. I remember walking over and, oh, Dad was so mad. Oh, he was mad. Mad? I never got mad. <laughs> did he? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I think one thing I'll have to say is, <laughs> as a grandpa, you're probably never as mad at your grandkids as you were at your kids. kids. And I would say Spencer would probably... Agree, talk. agree to that for sure. But that's <laughs> that's something that you guys are lucky that I, I love my dad and I love my mom. But Grandpa was pretty tough. You You've never had to deal with that side of him. <laughs> so be glad. Eating the cheese. Well, then we'd or else they'd be cooking in the middle of the night. Dad would call you like, quit eating. <laughs> Didn't you guys cook in the middle? Where's Brooke? Didn't you guys cook one night in the middle of the night? Yeah, we cooked breakfast. I think you did. There was a time we did in the middle of the 
Well, that was when when the wild one drove him up the canyon to the to the uh, Saint Saint Anne's at two o'clock in the morning. I got I got one last request and that if you guys I would I want to know dad what is the most admired trait that you have about mom and mom I want to know what is the most admired trait that you have about dad that you appreciate about mom what's something that you really appreciate about her Thinking, I'll she, tell you. She loves her Heavenly Father. I can say that. It's perfect. That's why I'm here. We thank him for it. I tell you, I know I came that close. But he is so generous to anybody. I mean, he's willing to give anything to anybody. When he worked in the temple and missionaries had come through, he was always willing to buy a, tent, a suit for somebody. He he will give anything to somebody that he feels like they're in need of. Him. A lot of times I don't even know it. He doesn't tell me. Well, and you get Lord. that from Thank you. The good Lord's been good to us. The good Lord's been good to us. I think Grandma Woodridge was more like probably that he probably got that from his mom she um, did she did that pretty quiet too didn't she i don't yeah. i don't recall ever really no, she she would quietly do things for ladies in the ward that she knew that needed things but he's he's very good to i mean even people he doesn't even know if somebody's had an accident somebody i don't even know Newton or somebody, what the heck happened to somebody? Oh, the man. And he wanted Amy to get the check written to them and sent off. We didn't know him at all. So he's very willing to help others. Thank you. Anybody else? He's even bought garments for people who needed underwear. Well, you have <laughs> people in people in your ward who have stopped me and said, <laughs> who have said your dad has even bought our underwear. <laughs> one thing one thing I've always wanted to do is to to write a book and try and find all the people that ever worked at Rudy's, oh. and give give that to Dad because I mean I. I've started the list, but there's so many. I'd like to look at it know. because I've, there's, me, I mean, yeah. lots of kids I went to school with, lots of kids I, that were a couple years older than me. I mean, there was tons I could go through. Half out. half the ward down by Grandpa's house or yeah. different things, but just. You need to look at it because I started the I list. I know, I there's know. two pages. Was he hard on them? Did you ever see him get round Yeah, Dad, Dad could get a little bit. Tough and, and stuff. Stuff could go way wrong at at the greenhouse sometimes. I remember. It still does. I mean, I mean, like uh, a, there was many nights we walked around with a hammer, banging down boards, holding yeah. plastic on houses because the winds were so bad that we stayed up all night. We'd sit in there and play cards, and every half hour walk around and make sure the plastic was on the houses or. Or things, and I remember going, showing up for work, and all the one whole greenhouse had frozen one night. And this is before there was alarms, or you know, if one of the kids had left a door open, or just different, just dumb things. One one year, I dad used to, and I I wanted to say this. I I know this is one of the things. Dad wasn't really around when I was growing up. In the summers, he was he worked a lot, and I think. You guys really need to appreciate what you have because my dad worked a ton and I never hardly saw him in the summer at all. 
he worked away. Gone. I mean, he was gone. And I mean, there was many things that we didn't get to do a whole lot. And, and I think what you have now is, is greatly built and greatly appreciate what he's done for you and, and how he's built that up because there was a lot of work. And I, I didn't see him a ton in the summers. And, you know, I like, I love sports. I could play baseball or different football or stuff like that. And dad worked a lot. He, he, he really did. And yeah, a lot of the, I remember my friends would go skiing for spring break was just something big and spring break was nothing at our house. (laughs) We didn't have a spring break, you know, And, and that's okay because I learned a lot, but I love my dad and, and he's, He's been a great example to me in, in that way as he just, he's never been afraid to just go get the work done and, and do what he had to do. And I think, you know, he's tried to pass and have us all be that way. And I hope that that's something that we can all appreciate. Before there was an alarm, there was, he'd have to go at 10, 4, and 6 yeah. to check the alarm. The heaters. The just heaters. No. I I think one thing you need to understand too is I mean our family is what it is now but I grew up with some pretty awesome aunts and uncles and a, and a big family and we had we knew our cousins and I mean we we spent so much quality time in the mountains or at, at reunions or just camping and things and I mean I love John I love David I loved all those guys were great examples to me and I think dad would say the same thing about them that they were his brothers and they they stood by one another no matter what went down they stood behind one another and I I don't think dad would ever back away from that today. No. We had good times. Oh, look at the night from Wyoming. I had to bring you home in the middle of the night. You were sick and I had to call mom here to meet us halfway. So her and the car along drove over. Grandpa Grandpa Nelson. Oh, did he? Yeah, I remember that. Come over through Bear Lake. And there was a herd of elk right by where you turn into beaver. It was like 2 in the morning when we were coming through there. Wally went to Minnesota and finished his mat all that was yeah. a week. With John. We, and I turned around, she took him home, and I drove back to Wyoming. Uh, slept for... He probably didn't sleep. About as long as the guys took the shower, get ready and go eat, went to work. Was he, were you cutting Christmas trees? Yeah, I think I'd like hurt my groin or I don't know, something was not That's crazy. Hey, I'll, I'll stand up for it as I knew what it was. It hurt my crap. Oh. Yeah, he worked away. He'd go when the greenhouse, when we were done there, he'd go drive truck, drive oil tankers. So he lived lived in Salt Lake, and he'd take the oil out at night. Go load up at night, the Twin Falls or somewhere in the morning, uh, unload the load. It hasn't been easy for these two guys. They busted their ass. One time we had this old Jeep, and I worked at the college, and I drove that old Jeep to work in the mornings, and it didn't have a heater. Was it red? It was red. Didn't I remember have a heater. That. It didn't. Did it have windshield wipers? Have it was so dang cold, and half Your the time swinging with the thing. Yeah. Half the time he'd have to pull me to get it going so I could go to work, or push me so that Jeep would start, and I go to work at the university and drive that cold dang Jeep. The, the frost was on the windows and I, was so dang cold. I remember when we got the Suburban and that was like big, that was cool. I mean, you know, that was. And, and I, we went on the trip to Yellowstone. You guys wouldn't even get out. 
<laughs> we'd say, get out, let's go look at those geysers. And they'd go, no, we can see it from here. <laughs> and they'd sit in the back and play cars. cars. I think cars. He cars. cars are We cars. were with the Andersons. Yeah. And then uh, I went with my dad, <laughs> and we ate a big pancake in West Yellowstone early in the morning, drove all the way through West Yellowstone into the park, around the park, back out, and home that night. <laughs> Just that you was two. our tr no, Yellowstone trip. <laughs> and I, after we, we first got married, we left him home to be in charge. And they, they took David and John and the younger ones to the Yellowstone. And we thought, oh, they're going to be gone for a few days. They were gone one day. You know, you, he couldn't be late for work because yeah. probably they were already home and would know he would be late. We, we'd go to Gray's River with all the cousins and grandpa and grandma. The, the green car they drove, you could hardly see out the front window because the yeah, dash was so high. And, and uh, honestly, so how, I don't even know how tall grandpa really was. I mean, but he wasn't super tall. No. And... We had we were all camping and whatnot, and they'd come up, and we had dinner, and I remember getting up in the morning, and the car was gone. <laughs> they just took off in the middle of the night and went home. <laughs> Nobody I knew it. I think they were sleeping in the car. Yeah, they were. <laughs> they got uncomfortable. He'd sleep in the car. Yeah. Yeah, he, well. He'd disappear in the night. Meryl bought a tent, remember? Yeah. A brand new tent. And he cut a hole in it because he got claustrophobic. <laughs> and he cut a big hole to get out. He was so mad. He Rudy couldn't find, yes, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he couldn't find the door. And it just so he just sliced it and went out. <laughs> that's, that's funny. <laughs> and one night, remember the Andersons started the tree on fire? Right by their Merrill, camp. that was by Merrill's camper. That was Gray's River, right? That was Gray's well, River. Was yeah. it you and Ben and Drew? Well, was, yeah, we were, it was, we were all kind of well, they were the playing with fires. Yeah, they yeah. were in California and the Colorado cousins, but they had a little fold-out tent, and they started this pine tree, and right when we got up in the morning, all under here it was smoking and smoldering. That could have fallen on our trailer. Yeah, they were so mad. Right we kind of it burned was, up it was, the night. Yeah. It was. Is that little gal's hair all wet? Yes, they've been, they've been in the hot tub. Austin asked what your favorite scriptures are. Oh, gosh. Minds uh, doubt not, fear not. What's your favorite scripture? 636. My favorite scripture? That's your favorite one. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> they all scared me when I was giving a talk. He was the main bishop. Yeah. I when, remember, I, when was your business the most successful? My business was probably the best when I was doing the most for the Lord. Huh. Don't forget it. Interesting. And you can give when you're wondering whether you should help somebody or not. Give it to them. It'll come back tenfold, I promise you that. You never go wrong. His bishop's office didn't have any literature. It just had diapers. <laughs> yes. And lots. lots of candy. Yes, honestly, we bought diapers for babies. Now you better be buying those. Look at the kids, and they're going to need diapers. Yeah. That thing was just stacked full of. Yeah, he did because we had students. The forest kids up there that lived in. Yep, poor dogs. conditions. Did he have to actually go bell one of them out of jail? Or? He gave it, yeah. One night he had to go bail somebody out of jail. The guy promised he'd pay him back, but he never did. Well, that's normal. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> who, who do you want to call? Yeah, I'm in the church. Having to go bail a guy out of jail. That cost me about 500 or a little more. Yeah, 
who calls it the bishop to help. Actually, I think a lot of people do. Like, I've heard that a lot by bishops. They get a lot of calls from jail. From jail. Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> you went on. You went on a mission. Do you wish you could have gone again? Do you wish you could have gone on another mission? Do you? Do you, do you wish you could have tracked? Maybe tracked it a little bit more versus more, less driving, more teaching kind of. No, no, we had all those opportunities. No, I think we just probably, probably, I don't know, I don't know, but we were, our best time was in Salt Lake. I was going to say, I think the happiest I've ever best seen you guys was, was when you worked in Salt Lake. And, and they were busy. I know. I know. See all of that. Seven years we were there. That was good. You'd wash your truck and it was dirty the next day. You never enjoyed that. Slam the doors. He had a struggle. I think Tom and I met to that, sister. <laughs> what was your... Tell, tell us of like one of your most spiritual experiences. On the mission? Just whenever in your life. Mine was when I was sick. When you were sick? The, the question is, what's how, how so? spiritual experience you've had? Mom saying hers was when she was sick. I... Well, I just thought it was dying. Oh, hold on. Hold She's on going. Huh? She's talking. Okay. It was Sunday. I didn't know. I just felt everything. It was a Sunday, you said? Was this in Salt Lake? Everybody, but I, Brooke had sent me something about our little kids had gone in the tunnel on their bikes, and I thought those little kids going through a dark tunnel, and that could be scary, and I just, I just thought of everybody and what trials and what things that they'd done that was hard. Did you almost feel like yourself? I mean, you said you felt like you I were something, felt, but did what did you feel like at peace down. after you um, thought these things, or you just don't really recall what? I just thought I'd go. I'm going. <laughs> you thought I've got it because if they can do it, I can do it. Yeah. If they if they can do hard things, I can do it. Anybody ever visit you? Nope. Nobody visited me. Well, I know that, but I Oh, no, no. <laughs> no, but no, no, but it's because I said something. They go, did you see anybody from the other side? No. Mm -hmm. Nope. Well, but I think it's just because I just thought of every single person in my family it, Hard things that maybe they faced and that they that they did. I mean, it's just the strength. I thought of all you kids that exercise and have so much energy and so much strength that I, I don't. I've got to do this. I've got to do this. And I know it was the prayers. I so many people have told me they prayed for me. So I just know it was prayer. I just can't imagine how being that I don't have to be 
I was tied in my bed and I had that thing in my mouth. Ooh. You couldn't swallow. It was just, it was just a, rat, a thing about that big and it was just in my mouth. I keep trying to chew it and get my tongue away from it. <sighs> Those people that come in with all that hazmat gear on them, it was just like, I was poison, you know, it was, it was all of me. Oh, it was a nightmare. I hate Hallmark movies because that was the only thing on TV. And I hated them. It was just so bad, I couldn't stand it when they come on. Oh, I couldn't stand it. That was the only day thing on TV. Oh, it just gives me bad memories when I see them. Oh, but that was my hardest spiritual experience. Way to be tough. Yeah, you did it. Yeah, hard. What about you, Dad? <laughs> well, I was suffering when she was gone. Well, you concerns. just don't realize how much you count on each other in this life. So one of them steps out of what they normally do and you're standing there fluttering. And I, I know we just take each other for granted in this life. You kids need to realize that. that your parents, your spouses, you just don't know how much you had count on each other and how important it is that you have a good relationship. And you'll, you do, you'll be fine. The Lord will take care of the problems. But I can remember praying a lot that if she was to come back, I'd sweep the floor or do something. You know, it's life. <laughs> he sees it all the time. Didn't he call you and say, I've got to He did happy. call me and say, well, I guess you're going to have to come show me how to use the washer. <laughs> Himself. I didn't know how Underwear. to do lots. Got to have a good daughter, good daughter to help me out in this life. But that's what life's about. And that's it. Isn't the fame and the fortune when you get to the end? It's how you live your life and live with your spouse and your family. You'll see that. Each one of you, and you'll realize how important it is. Cause it don't, it'll happen. It's just short shooting. Life is interesting. <coughs> really quick, tell about the people you've seen that you feel comfortable telling about. Who have passed on? Who have passed on? Those are spiritual experiences, people you've seen from the other side. Your grandpa. Yeah, I've seen my grandpa before. Well, I've seen the whole bunch of them. When my grandpa died, they were on the lawn of a green, green lawn in a circle. I have never because I was a baby, could remember what my grandma Winfrey's looked like. And yet, to this day, I can tell you exactly what she looks like. And how old were you, I sorry? I've seen her. They are. How old when you were you? Saw this? Yeah. How old were you when you saw but, this? Uh, I thought you were a kid. Five, let's see. When your how grandpa old died. You when you're in fifth grade. Or, right. First but, grade? No. Fifth grade. First grade. Oh, yeah, sorry. First grade, five or six. six. You're six, yeah. But how, how, were you six when Grandpa Blotter died? 
because he said they brought him to this house, to the house. Oh yeah. And he said I I was too afraid I could not go in and look at him. And he used to beg me to come in, and I wouldn't come in. Well, not when he, he died. <laughs> <laughs>